Hello, my name is Nikita Ifkin, and today I will talk about network monitoring using integral queries. Work done in, co in collaboration with Ran, Alan, Gil, Roy, and Vladimir. Network monitoring is at the heart of many domains, such as traffic engineering, load balance routing, attacks and anomaly detection, and many others. Over several decades of development, it collected a variety of metrics, among which is heavy heater flows, also known as iceberg flows or elephant flows, number of unique flows as cardinality, uh, entropy, change of detection, change detection, and many others. Due to massive volumes of traffic and low memory, it was sampling and sketching techniques lie in almost every single monitoring algorithm. In current talk, we dig deeper into the sketching techniques. Consider the scenario of distributed denial of service attack. When dealing with anomalies and attacks, recent information has higher weight rather than historical data. Look at two graphs. We use streaming algorithm to compute entropy on green prefix A and green prefix B. When prefix becomes long enough, entropy on A and B are barely indistinguishable, barely distinguishable, even though B includes the attack. Thus, vanilla streaming uh, solution will fail to detect it. That was original motivation for the sliding window computational model, where sketch computes statistics only on the last n packets or over the last t seconds, depends how we define time window. Entropy on the green window A is significantly smaller than entropy on the green window B. Thus, sliding window solution successfully detects the attack. However, window size should be fixed in advance and we cannot look into the de details within the window and detect any events there. This brings us to the interval query model, which acts similarly to the sliding window model, as it computes statistics only on the last end updates. However, its inner structure can provide approximations on any sub-window specified at the query time. Thus, we can identify events within the window. For instance, we can identify the beginning and the end of the attack or some kind of anomaly. Our main contribution uh, is the first L2 heavy heater algorithm, which works in interval query model. In addition, we extend the idea of universal sketching from standard streaming to interval query. In networking community, it's known uh, as a union mon universal monitoring introduced by Liu and colleagues in 16. Uh, putting two results together, we come up with the algorithms for entropy, uh, number of distinct flows, heavy heaters, uh, L1, L2, uh, L1, L2 norms, and many other sub L2 statistics. Uh, and now imagine you can maintain only one sketch and at any moment, T, ask what's the entropy 35 seconds to 30 seconds ago? Or what is the number of distinct flows from 15 seconds to 10 seconds ago? All of it using only one sketch, which works in sublinear memory. We evaluate the framework uh, on real internet traces and showcase the ability to identify a beginning and the end of simulated network anomaly. We start with formalizing the model, discussing previous results and arguing about approximate scheme. Then we overview two sliding window frameworks and show uh, how one of them can be used to extend the, uh, to answer interval queries. After that, we overview the L2 heavy heater algorithm, which we suggest, and consequences of plugging it into the universal sketching framework. Finally, we provide the attack localization algorithm and demonstrated performance in practice. Uh, interval query model is very close in nature to sliding window model. Moreover, it can be actually considered as generalization of it, as interval query algorithm can answer sliding window queries, but not the other way around. Consider streaming uh, stream of items S. At any moment T, uh, sliding window model requires to return approximation, approximation of some target function F computed on the last uh, N updates. Interval query model at any moment T given time interval T1, T2, which should be within the last N updates, return approximation of the target function computed only on the updates within this time window T1, T2. Uh, obviously, if you choose T1, T2 being T minus N and N, N then you get the sliding window query. Um, we'll quickly go over the definition of the LP heavy heaters to understand the difference between L1 and L2. So recall that alpha LP heavy heaters uh, is a heavy heater is an item that appears at least alpha fraction of the P norm of frequency vector. Uh, the frequency vector is that every ith coordinate of the frequency vector is a number of appearances of the ith item in the stream. L1 and L2 are the most interesting guarantees because we actually cannot hope for anything stronger than L2 uh, as it is proven to be a polynomial in memory. Among algorithms for L1 heavy heater, we have sampling, 
initialize a uh, component sketch. For L2, we have count sketch and BP3. Note that sampling would not requ would require polynomial memory if uh, we want to find L2 heavy hitters. To show that L2 guarantee is much stronger than L1, first uh, we'll show two pictures. Uh, left one depicts the L1 heavy hitter, 0.2 L1 heavy hitter, uh, in the stream where every other item appears at most once. And the uh, right picture shows L2 heavy hitter, which, where every other item appears at most once. Uh, it's also 0.2, but L2 heavy hitter. Note that it's obviously more difficult to find L2 heavy hitter, it appears way less often. Uh, while there is a line of work uh, for both L1 and L2 heavy hitters in sliding windows, only L1 was considered in the interval query model, and quite. Uh, we will fill this gap uh, with our algorithm by considering the interval query for L2 heavy hitters. First, we discuss the approximation scheme. We show that vanilla multiplicative approximation for L2 norm and heavy hitters uh, leads to the polynomial memory. Thus, we decide to adjust the approximation scheme. Uh, we find the uh, middle ground between additive and error and multiplicative by introducing the error which is multiplicative on the tail. That is, L2 norm of interval T1, T2 is approximated with epsilon times L2 norm of tail T1, T. We adjust this definition for the heavy hitters accordingly by defining the heavy hitter as an item which appears more than epsilon fraction of the tail T1, T. We now move to discussion of sliding window framework. Sliding window frameworks are used to extend existing streaming solution to the sliding window model. Two foundational sliding window frameworks are currently available, exponential histograms by Dator in 2002 and smooth histograms by Breverman in 2007. Exponential histogram breaks interval into t minus n to t into k buckets of exponentially growing size of a bucket. At every step, new bucket appears and some buckets are getting pruned. To estimate, the, to estimate the approximation on t minus nt, one need to combine all the buckets into one, uh, into one sketch uh, at the query time. Similarly, smooth histograms maintain k buckets, which overlaps and increase in size exponentially. Both frameworks have requirement on target function to keep number of buckets k sublinear. Both requires f to be uh, non-negative and polynomially bounded. Uh, exponential histogram requires sketch to be uh, mergeable, basically composable, so you can combine them together at the end of the at the query time. Uh, while smooth histograms introduce the property of smoothness, uh, basically saying that two buckets are if they at some point in time close a nothing value, then adding new updates to both of them would not put them push them apart by too much. Uh, and uh, his uh, exponential histograms assumes uh, that uh, f should be weakly additive. Uh, as previously said, said, at every step, new bucket is formed, and uh, some buckets are getting pruned according to the interval invariance for each framework. Here are the interval in, uh, invariants. Uh, we show how to extend smooth histograms framework to answer interval queries, and we refer uh, the listener to the manuscript uh, for the extension of the exponential histograms to the interval queries. It, uh, there is all advantages and disadvantages for each of them. At any moment, t given interval t1 and t2, uh, and having the smooth histograms uh, maintained for the last uh, t minus n steps, find the closest uh, buckets a1 uh, in, uh, to t1 and t2. Basically, those are buckets a2 and bucket a4, uh, as on the picture, and return the difference. Difference represents value of the interval small a1 to small a2. Uh, for each uh, case, we will need to prove that the uh, interval, the value on the interval a1 to a2 is actually good approximation for the value on the interval t1, t2. For example, one can estimate the L2 norm using this trick by utilizing only one over epsilon to the six log n memory. Now we move to discussion of actual L2 heavy hitter algorithm in internal query model. Uh, we actually introduced three algorithms and uh, there is a, they based uh, themselves from different models for L2 heavy hitters and different uh, starting window frameworks. And they have um, trade-offs, uh, one on, as you can see, algorithm one is better in the query time, but worse in the update time compared with algorithm two, but algorithm three is, uh, Overview leader in all dimensions, so we'll discuss it here. Uh, so algorithm three builds on the top of the sliding window algorithm by Braverman and colleagues uh, from 18. Uh, it tracks, it 
utilize several tr uh, tricks. Uh, first, it tracks L2 norm using smooth histograms, and it uses constant approximation. Uh, Balema uh, above, which we just discussed, uh, it provides a constant approximation, also an interval query. Uh, it maintains a count sketch on each prefix of some uh, smooth histograms. Uh, we refer to the same smooth histograms which we are running for L2. Uh, and uh, these um, count sketches can identify potentially heavy hitters on the very early stage. Then we maintain the pool of potentially heavy hitters, and for each of them in the pool, for each item in the pool, we run its own smooth histograms for just a counter. By lemma, I made it here, we smooth histograms with uh, alpha beta is equal one over epsilon one over epsilon, uh, provides one of uh, plus minus epsilon approximation for the count. Uh, at a query time, uh, we query L2 norm and the frequency uh, on the interval for every item in the pool and report those items which are crossing the epsilon over two uh, L2 norm of the uh, interval um, of the sorry, of, of the tail uh, as by definition of the heavy hitter. So basically we're pruning those items which are in the pool. Uh, just to reiterate again through the algorithm, uh, through the initialization phase, we are initializing smooth histograms for L2 uh, with a constant approximation. Uh, we run the count sketch on every prefix of that uh, smooth histograms in the, in, uh, for the L2. And we maintain the pool of potentially heavy, uh, potential heavy hitters. And for each item in the pool, we run the, its actual count with a multiplicative uh, approximation uh, in a sense of, uh, uh, interval query. Uh, so for every update, uh, we first uh, update smooth histograms for L2, then we put item into the into the count sketch, uh, corresponding to the count sketch, and we update the count sketch um, uh, heap. And if the item in the heap is uh, above the threshold, we add it to the pool of potentially heavy items. And we start tracking uh, it with the smooth histograms as on the line 12. Uh, and this process is going on until we have a query. And at the query time, we basically query first L2 norm of the tail uh, to identify if the heavy hitter will be heavy or not enough. And then we query all the potential heavy hitters from the pool for actual heaviness on the interval and compare it with the tail. Now we move to the extension of uh, universal sketching or univmon. Um, universal sketching approximate uh, Function capital G, which is a sum of a frequency, a function of frequencies, G of fi, where fi is a frequency of ith item, and uh, but only for the class of functions G x that are grow slower than x squared, basically sub L two, uh, drops faster than uh, no faster than sub polynomially and has some predictable local variability. Uh, the list includes uh, most functions using telemetry, L one, L two heavy hitters, norms. Uh, cardinality, entropy, uh, distinct counts, and so on. Uh, Liu and a colleague show in 16 showed how to implement universal sketching using recursive sketch plus L2 heavy hitters. Uh, main advantage of this uh, result is that maintaining only one sketch uh, and specifying the target function only at a query time. So only one sketch, at the query time you can decide which function you want to query. We extend uh, the theory behind the integral query model to uh, behind the um, univmon to integral query model and plug in our L2 heavy hitter as a black box uh, such that we get in the result uh, algorithms uh, estimating entropy, cardinality, L2 norm, and so on. Those are the first results for the integral query model not present previously in the community. Now we move to the attack localization algorithm details. Uh, by my, as previously mentioned, by monitoring the distribution entropy using only sliding window algorithm, we can identify that attack has started, but we cannot drill uh, down uh, the queries and uh, understand where exactly it happened, or basically when exactly it happened, the time moment. For example, say we have one hour window and an attack started at 5 p.m. It, it might take a pretty long time, half an hour, until the change in the window entropy changes significantly enough to identify the attack. And that would be the, enough, the most precision we can get to identify the start time, half an hour. Um, we demonstrate the usefulness of the interval query model by performing the drill down queries that pinpoints the start of the attack. We start by using window queries to identify that attack is actually happened. 
Then we break the window into four quadrants and estimate the entropy on each. We use the previous intervals to deduce what is the safe entropy range. I mean, the previous in the past uh, to understand before the attack happened. Uh, since the entropy is abnormally high already on the second interval, we conclude that the safe, uh, prune, uh, it's safe to prune the last quadrant and recurs on the remaining time frame. By breaking down the remaining time frame into intervals, we observe that the attack now starts at the second half and thus prune the first interval, etc. And we go on, etc. and etc. etc. Step by step by step, we can uh, this algorithm terminates when all the estimated entropies are within the expected range and the measurement accuracy does not allow further reduction of the range. Uh, but if we have more space, we can get better entropy est estimations and better localizations. Here on the graph, you can see comparison of the uh, our algorithm in integral query with the baseline approach, which is basically using sliding window or fixed window size. As you can see, the more memory provide better localization of the uh, uh, starting point. To wrap up, uh, we introduced queries for a large variety of measurement functions, such as heavy hitters, O2 is a new one, count distinct uh, entropy frequency moments. Uh, and our algorithm enables time localization of networking attacks. Uh, there's many open questions. For example, can we design sketches that receive additional filters at a query time, uh, not in advance, such as a flow subset, subset of the topology, or flow of key definition, and so on. Thanks a lot for your attention.